Billy. Come on that way, Billy. Oh, by the way, Billy, do you remember <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> You want to tell them about when you? I was in the thing. I've been there alone with like three strides. I had a little uniform on my baby brother. <laughs> it used to be a <laughs> But we're going to go ahead and play the DVD of Billy. So Billy, if you'll get over here so that your head won't be in the way. Go ahead. Well, I was born in a little town of Durham, Mississippi, and it was a home delivery, which is rare these days. So the military was actually a vacation for me. But I actually, which I don't think my brothers know this, because they're swabbies, I wanted to join the Navy. And I had to pass the Air Force recruiter's office to get to the Navy recruiter's office. And he had that hook that they grabbed you and snatched you into the room as you go by. And he told me that the Navy had filled their quota for the year. So I could still join the Navy if I wanted to, but it was going to be six, to, six months to a year before they could take me. I believe everything he told, told me at that time. <laughs> so I wound up leaving for Jackson, Mississippi that afternoon. But from there, they assigned me to, it was a fighter squadron. I could work on that fighter planes, F-86s. These were the first fighter aircraft that the Air Force had. And I worked on the radios. And believe it or not, that small fighter plane had eight different radio systems. Plus all the armament and radar, but we worked in the shop, which is strictly just on the radio portion of the thing. I love working on my jet planes, especially the, the and this is a fighter and he's loaded with two and a half inch rockets and 24 of them. And, but when we were in Yuma, Arizona for our competition, we were living in tents and we were working out of tents because we were a mobile unit that had to be able to move anywhere in the world at just a moment's notice and we were self-contained and could do anything up to a point to keep our airplanes running. So we were on the back side of the field and if we wanted supplies we'd have to get on a, a tug which is that tractor looking thing that pulls the aircraft around and we'd have to get on them and go down to the field maintenance where the shops, the permanent quarters were for the shops and the materials are. Well, one day we were going down there, and this, it was cold weather, it's in February. And at night it gets cold in Arizona, February. But this tug is made with fenders and running boards so that several people can get on at the same time. Well, several of us were on going down there to get coffee and to get some supplies for our maintenance work as one of the fighter planes from another outfit was taken off down the runway. And as soon as he got part of the way down the runway, he started making a weird noise and this just black smoke was just billowing out of the back of this plane. But he was going too fast and too close to the end of the runway to stop, so he had to try to take off. There was a housing project immediately at the end of the runway and he went over the housing project. But rather than taking his plane on out in the desert and ditching it, because he was in, in terrible trouble, he tried to circle around and bring it back to the base and save his aircraft. But he tried to st stay away from the populated area of Yuma, and there were a bunch of mountains out there. And he actually crashed into one of the mountains trying to save the people and save his aircraft too. We watched him die. But the thing that was funny about it, we're standing around and you can smell the smoke immediately. 
But it had just happened, so he's miles away. How could we smell the smoke? Well, we looked around, and one of the guys that smoked, his field jacket was on fire. He was so excited, he lighting up one cigarette after the other and stood taking his little cigarette in his pocket. <laughs> he's on fire. Mm. That's what we smelled. <laughs> That was comical, but considering the situation, but it just broke my heart watching somebody die. He thought it wasn't that close. We knew he did it to save the people on the ground. But that, that was one of probably the worst experiences. Greater love has no man than to give his life for his friend. That pilot as Billy was talking about, it's no greater example than that kind of love. William Henry Lee, how long were you in the Air Force, Billy? Four years. Didn't you want to present him with his copy? <laughs> Thank you.